It is George right here with you. If they are praying people, Nigeria are praying people, go to the express road. You can't even travel from Lagos to Ibadan again. Because people, various praying camps, with all those prayers, where's the justice? Is it God's will if we are praying that much? Why should an overseer be going with retinue of mobile policemen? Someone say, Pastor, it's because you are not a big man of God. I don't want to be that big man of God. If that's the definition of your big man of God. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. If I have, I'm calling upon God and I will depend on mobile police to be carrying gun and following me about and I'm representing a God. Well, look, look at Is that not stupidity? And then, those, those are the ones we hail. <laughs> big man of God. Stupid people. All of us, including myself. So don't think I'm just abusing you. Somebody is preaching, God is your covering, is your everlasting, and then he enters his car. Mobile is going in front. You, you are going on foot. Who will protect you? Are you not thinking? And yet we celebrate them, great men of God. Who has bewitched you? The Bible says, support is to test to know whether you're ready for the ministry. If you are doing it, then you don't know. He's not dead. He is not dead. Yes. TV. Uh, here is our editorial for the week. I credit our word of knowledge today to a Simon Oladapo. Here is a word of knowledge that you can cash in as we reflect on yesterday and what persists in our world today. There are basically two economies in the world and every nation on the face of the earth fall under either of them. These are the knowledge economy and the religion economy. The rich and prosperous nations of the world belong to the knowledge economy, while the poorest and poverty-stricken nations of the world belong to the religion economy. The knowledge economy is one that engages the brain, asks questions, relevant questions, and prefers solutions to problems. The religion economy is one that blackmails God and dumps every responsibility on Him. The knowledge economy tasks the brain, while the religion economy numbs the brain. Japan, for instance, is a knowledge economy. It has no natural resources, but it is a prosperous nation and one of the richest on the planet. At least six of every ten cars on Africa's road today are Japanese made. Japan is not a religious economy, but it is one of the most corrupt free nations. China, in the, on the other hand, is not a religious economy, but nations that ignore China do so at their own peril. African countries fall under the category of religion economy. More so than others, African countries are endowed with the majority of the natural resources on the face of the earth, yet also among the poorest. Africa wears proudly the badge of the poverty capital of the world with endless corruption. It is also one of the most religious continents on the planet. God watches in disgust as we mortgage our brains. But here is the irony. 
the two major religions of the world, Christianity and Islam, emanated from Israel and Saudi Arabia, respectively. But none of those two nations fall under religion economy. None. One of the evidences of their subscription to knowledge economy is the yearly pilgrimages that generates for them revenues in billions of dollars. But hypocritically, some corrupt nations are comfortable disseminating nuisance to humanity with their globalization of religion economy. There's a reason he gave man brain and instructed him to subdue the earth. If you are a Christian or a Muslim who does not commit yourself to the pursuit of knowledge, your life will become a perfect re reflection of some of these uninspired nations. That's a fact. It is an illusion to anticipate wisdom where people do not pay attention to knowledge. My name is Anthony Afalo. Visit our website on www.nabntv.com. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Be well. Have a great day. I say Kai, Kai. <laughs> that was quite an interesting one. <laughs>